Hej kompisar! Välkommen till Muna Youtube-kanalen. In Swedish it means Hello friends, welcome to my Youtube channel. In this video, I will build the Swedish multi-role jet fighter, the Saab JAS-39 Gripen. I did a short review of this kit lately, so in a shortcut, let's talk about it. The Italeris 172 scale Gripen is an older kit. The plastic is softer than expected. Panel lines and details are simplified, so there is need for an upgrade. I will try to upgrade the wheel wells, landing gear and the cockpit. I like the option of four paint schemes and markings. You can choose to build a Czech, Swedish, Hungarian and South African Gripen. And the decals look amazing. I have plenty of experience with decals and the Italian decals are good quality. Great! I'm looking forward to build this kit. Let's grab some pliers and hobby knives and let's begin, shall we? And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. Since the cockpit is poorly detailed, I will use a resin cockpit from Enhamulus. To cut the resin parts, I will finally use my Extol Microgel. It's very handy and still cheap compared to other microgels. And of course, if you work with resin, you need to have a mask. Resin dust is very harmful to health. When I cut the parts, I sand them with sandpaper. I will keep some material on the cockpit top. I will dry fit them a lot of times. Let's paint the cockpit. The Gripen's cockpit is painted with a light grey and black color. The resin cockpit has nice small details, like these three mounted function displays, lots of push buttons and small levers. I paint these details with a paintbrush, then I add a metallic dry brush and seal the paint job with a glossy varnish coat. For more detail showing, I add a black panel line wash from Tamiya. The black painted parts are washed with a light grey Tamiya wash. And the wash is removed with enamel odorless thin. The cockpit is ready for assembly. For gluing all the parts together, I use my approved Loctite Sign and Acrylic Super Glue. The resin cockpit doesn't fit so good. There is still a need for some grinding. I can't remove any more material from the resin parts, so best way is to gently remove some plastic from the wheel well. The plastic part is quite thick, it's not a problem to grind it. Of course, you have to proceed slowly and dry fit it a couple of times.
Now that's more like it. When it's done, I glue the cockpit with super glue, add additional weight, and start the fuselage assembly. The whole fuselage assembly was without problems. Before I glue the wings to the fuselage, I cut out the leading edges, flaps and airlocks. I always like to have some more modifications on my model, it looks much more interesting. For this procedure I use a thin razor saw. The plastic is softer, so the time spending with cutting is much shorter. After I cut out all the control surfaces, I clean the cuts with a soft nail file. Ok, now I can glue the wings to the fuselage. A gap was created from the inside of the flaps after gluing. I had to fill it up with a plastic plate and putty. I will come to the flaps later when the putty dries out. Meanwhile, I glue the weapon hardpoints on the end of the wings and work on the monos air intakes. This model does not contain any input tunnel or engine. Therefore, the area of the input must be painted black and covered with the air intake.
I sand it down and adjust the flaps into a needed shape. Now I can glue the flaps in a lowered parking position. Next is the wheel well and landing gear modification. I drew out small holes for the additional lead wires imitating hydraulic hoses and electric cables. Lead wires are very handy, they are easy to cut and bend. Next, I paint the front instrument panel cover with a black color, glue the heads-up display and paint it with a very diluted bright green. When it's done, I glue the front section of the cockpit canopy. Let's fill all visible gaps with putty. I dilute the putty a little bit with Mr. Color Thinner. This way you can add the diluted putty with an oil paintbrush. Working with a diluted putty is much faster and more effective. Ok, since the putty's drying time is a couple of hours, let's work on the Gripen's weapons. I decided to equip the Gripen with a center fuel tank, two AGM-65 Maverick Archer surface missiles, two M9M Sidewinders, and two M120 MRA missiles which I took from my Rebel Eurofighter Typhoon kit. Alright, the putty dried out. I carefully sand down the excessive putty underwater with a smoother sandpaper. I prefer sandpapers with a grain of over 600 and more, because I'm not a big fan of rough sanding. Next, I mask the cockpit canopy with a masking tape and liquid mask. The model is ready for surfacing. For this procedure, I use Mr. Primer Surface 1000. 
After priming, I highlight all panel lines with a pre shading technique. I use this technique very often on my models. The black pre shading will be visible after I add a highly diluted camouflage painting. This way, the model will have a look of a more weathered and used aircraft. And since I'm using a black paint, I also paint the wheels as well. All camouflages except the South African Gripen has the same camouflage pattern. I checked out a lot of pictures of the aircraft and for me the most attractive is the dirty and weathered Hungarian Gripen. So I decided to go with this path. First, I paint the radar cone with a light gold grey color. Since I don't want to overpaint the radar cone with another layer of grey color, I mask it with masking tape. Now I continue painting the lower side of the aircraft with a lighter grey tone. The color is diluted in a mix ratio 1 to 4 to leveling thinner. I take my time and add 4 or 5 fine layers of paint. You need to be careful and try not to overpaint the black pre shading. It must be visible. A sharper transition is visible between the colors of the lower and upper camouflage paints. I don't want to airbrush it by hand, so I rather use a masking tape and then mask the whole bottom. When it's done, I can paint the upper side of the model with a darker grey color. And again, the color is highly diluted. Let's check out how the whole masking worked out. Sometimes I feel like the masking is a never ending procedure. It's taking too much time, but the final result is very satisfying. There is more masking to do. Since I'm building a Hungarian Gripen, a fake cockpit canopy is painted on the bottom side of the aircraft. There are also decals available for this option, but I rather mask it with masking tape. Next, I paint the wheel wells and landing gear and all the small details with a thin paintbrush.
After I paint all the small details, I seal the paint job with a glossy varnish coat. The next step are decals. The Italian decals are good. They are softer than expected, but flexible and easy to work with. But be careful not to damage them with a rough handling. Be more gentle. Next is post shading. I want to create a much more flown and weathered look. The easiest way to create this effect is to mix the original camo paint with a drop of lighter shade or in my case a drop of white. To do so each panel must be painted separately. Now I seal the post shading with a layer of glossy varnish coat. Now to the fun part, weathering. First I apply a dark grey enamel wash to highlight all the panel lines. I often use several brands of washes like Mick Jimenez, AK or Tamiya. Enamel washes dry fast. So after a short while, I wipe out the excessive wash with a cotton swab soaked in enamel thinner. Next, I add a layer of matte varnish. Yes, you can also use a glossy surface, but a matte surface is a much better workplace for oil paints and pigments. The easiest way to create weathering and dirty places is to apply a small layer of oil paint with a thin paintbrush. With a white brush with a fine hair, I gently spread the color and blend it with the surface. If you are not satisfied with the result, you can easily remove the oil weathering with an enamel thinner and start over again. Just for example, with this model, the oil weathering took me like 2 hours to complete. After the weathering is done, I seal it with a final layer of my own matte varnish mix. Before I start to assemble all parts together, I unmask the cockpit canopy. Yes, 
it looks like this procedure is harmless, but beware and try to avoid the clear plastic with a sharp knife. You can easily stretch it. When removing, be gentle and precise. If you are afraid of scratching and do not believe in yourself, use a toothpick to remove the mask. Let's begin with the final assembly, shall we? As usual, I start with gluing the landing gear. The fit wasn't the best. Before gluing, I dry fit it a couple of times. The plastic is a little bit soft and I had to use more force than expected. Before the main landing gear covers, I had to glue the center fuel tank in place. The covers are placed around it. Now that's more like it. Next, I glue the A120 MRAN air to air missiles, the AGM 65 Maverick air to surface missiles, and the short range infrared AIM 9M Steinwinder missiles. The jet nozzle assembly was without problems, but the rear air brakes were a nightmare. It was difficult to glue them. Since I have the leading edges and the flaps lowered in a parking position, it will be a pity to glue the canard straight, in a parking position with you as well. And at the very end of the final assembly, I glue the cockpit canopy. Alright, the Italeris 1 to 72 scale Saab JAS 39 Gripen is finally finished. The model was very pleasant and fun to build. For its low cost and simplicity, it isn't the most detailed model in my collection, but with some effort, it still can look very good and interesting. I hope you like this video build. Please subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. If you are interested to see more of my work, join me on Facebook or Instagram. There's a link in the description. Thank you for watching guys, keep modeling and stay awesome. And please, don't go anywhere, here's the final reveal.